My name is Leon McCarran, and I'm an author and adventurer or explorer. I'm from the north coast of Northern Ireland, and I spent probably the last decade and a half traveling around the world. The more years I spend in China, the more I feel like I'm just starting to scratch the surface of what a deep history and culture there is there to discover. My first impression of China was in the winter of 2010 on a bicycle from New York eventually to Hong Kong. It was beautiful and it was fascinating, but I just saw a tiny little corner of it. And then I did the big journey from um, Mongolia to Hong Kong. I went with a friend who lived in Hong Kong. Together we decided to very simply walk from one end, from the northern edge of the country to the southern edge, right through the heart of it, and to see what that taught us about not just the geography and the landscapes, but the people and the culture and the history and all of these different layers that make China what it is. On a journey of seven months and 3,000 miles or 5,000 kilometers, you have to expect that everything will change. We started on the northern edge of the Gobi Desert, and we started in November, so winter was just starting. And within about a week of traveling, the weather changed completely. It went to about minus 20 degrees Celsius. One of the amazing things was that although it seems like a completely empty landscape, we found these herders who were there with their goats and sheep and their Bactrian camels. And they would see us coming through the blizzard and welcome us into their to their dares where they lived and they would feed us and give us something warm to drink and sometimes let us stay the night there. When we were on our expedition and it was still very cold, I remember that the Yellow River was completely frozen over and so we walked along it for a few days. We were slowly running out of food and we were starting to get quite worried until we got to one small village where there was just one family living there. And this very, very old man came out to greet us and told us that he knew the way over the mountain to the next village to a more major valley where we could get all of our supplies. But he said it was very difficult and the only way we could do it was if we followed him. And so this old man put on all of his waterproof clothes and warm things and um, came out with his old stick and led us through this amazing ancient pathway that we'd have never found otherwise what would probably have taken us a day or more to try and figure out by ourselves, he showed us in maybe two hours. And he was so humble, so kind. At the end, he wouldn't accept any payments. He just said, this is a very normal thing to do for strangers. And I often remember him and that kindness. And I'm, I'm grateful for people like him all along the way. I have a lot of areas of China that I really am I'm very fond of. I love Jiangjiajia National Park, and you know I know that's a, a completely unique, world-class landscape. But I've never seen anything else like that. There's beautiful trails to walk along. I love being able to get right up high and look down over these really odd-looking pillars, and also just to see that it's so popular that there's so many Chinese enjoying it too. When I was on my expedition in China, I met a guy called Dennis Hu, and we stayed friends for many years, and in the last four or five years, discussed the, the prospect of developing hiking trails together. And so I worked with Dennis and his team, and my American colleague, David Landis. We began work on the Shufang Mountain Trail in early 2019, and it took us about a year to create the 100 kilometer, 62 mile, long trail. The recommended journey starts high up in the mountains with these thousand year old rice fields and then path comes down through the watersheds down onto the river. It comes along the old pathways that the poet Chu Yuan perhaps walked on in his exile. It then passes through an area that connects to the high-speed train that goes to the bigger cities like Changsha and so you have this meeting of the ancient world and the modern. We have a number of plans to develop more pathways in China. There's so much history. It's a place that people always traveled on foot. 
It's a country with a really growing and emerging market for adventure tourism and outdoor tourism. The paths also help protect natural environments, celebrate local culture, and they have all of these layers of benefits. Nowadays, I think explorers should travel to hear stories, to hear about how things are different in whichever new place they might happen to be. We're finding pathways that people have used in China sometimes for over 2,000 years. Um, and we're now just attaching a new story to that uh, that helps people learn about it in a new way. When we think about the world from a distance, it can seem sometimes scary or uncertain, but my experience is that the world is a kind place, a friendly place. When I meet people from anywhere in the world, often they share the same values. So I always try and remember and try and remind all those around me too that despite how it sometimes seems, the, the world's a good place and I think that's an encouraging thought for all of us.